In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather today now on this fourth Sunday of Advent. As Christmas draws near, we hear the gospel today where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and, invites her now that, and tells her now that she is going to be the mother of God, the Messiah. We pause now to realize that with God, all things are possible. And through Mary's yes, we are encouraged now to give our yes to God. Let us pause to truly prepare our hearts to celebrate these wondrous and sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing. covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifest through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In just five short days, we will be celebrating the birthday of our Savior. The story of his birth begins in the Gospel of St. Luke with this phrase, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth. Along with Michael and Raphael, Gabriel is one of the great archangels serving the throne of God. His name means God is mighty, and he is called upon to make it clear that God is about to perform a mission impossible in someone's life. In today's Gospel reading, Gabriel appears to Mary to declare that God has chosen her to be the mother of the Messiah. She is startled and cannot comprehend the meaning of the angel's greeting and message. How can she be pregnant if she is a virgin? Gabriel explains to her that it will be by the power of the Holy Spirit that she will conceive. And so the child will not be the son of a human father, but
but of God himself. Gabriel ends his message with these words, for nothing will be impossible for God. The angel Gabriel announces to Mary that God is about to do the impossible in her life. The scriptures, my friends, are full of stories of those whom God chooses to do the impossible. In the first reading, God tells David that his dynasty will be without end. David had been a simple shepherd boy. Alone, David could never have expected to do anything more than that. Yet once he was called and empowered by God, he becomes the king of his people, and he is remembered forever because from his line, Jesus, the Messiah, was born. God did the impossible in the life of King David. The 12 apostles chosen by Jesus to carry on his message throughout the world were simple fishermen, tax collectors, and political idealists. By themselves, they didn't amount to much. Yet God used them to spread the message of his gospel throughout the world. Empowered by the work of the Holy Spirit, they were emboldened to witness to Jesus' love even in the face of persecution and death. And they are the reason why we are here today. The message of Jesus has reached us here in this place so many centuries later because God did the impossible in the lives of 12 simple men who said yes and followed Jesus. The, tra the same is true for so many saints throughout the ages. You think of the early Christian martyrs and the martyrs to this very day who willingly give their lives in witness to Jesus Christ because they believed that God was with them and that God could do great things through them, and he did. You think of our own Father Baker, who gave his yes to God for 60 years as a priest here at Our Lady of Victory. Look at all that he was able to accomplish and all that continues to this very day because Father Baker believed that nothing was impossible for God. God is indeed great. It is the nature of God to, to work wonders. When we say yes to God, the impossible happens. As we look at our own lives today, what wonders do we want God to perform for us? Are there people in our lives struggling with addiction? Do we have children who have drifted away from the church and no longer believe? Are we struggling in our marriages or in our relationships? Has the economy and the pandemic placed a strain on our finances and our jobs? If we entrust our cares to the Lord, we can expect the Lord to do great things for us. We are rational and practical people, but too often, we settle for the merely possible when God wants to do the impossible. There is nothing that we could ever ask of God that would be impossible for him to do for us. And because we are his children, and because he loves us so deeply, there is nothing he will not do for us as long as it is in keeping with God's will for us. All things are possible with God. We are here today because God did the impossible in the life of Mary. We are here today because God did the impossible by becoming man in the person of Jesus Christ. And God, in a few moments, will do the impossible right before us again when we take simple bread and wine that will become the body and blood of Christ to nourish and strengthen us spiritually today to unleash his mighty power of God, all Mary did was tell Gabriel, yes, let it be done to me as you say. To witness the impossible in our own lives, all we have to do as we receive the Lord spiritually today is to tell Jesus, yes, let your will be done in my life as you say. As we prepare now for Christmas, the wonder of God's love for us all, let us remember the message of Gabriel to Mary. 
Nothing will be impossible for God. All we have to do is to believe and say yes. Amen. And together now we profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, with reliance on our good and gracious God, we bring our prayers to him. For Pope Francis, our new bishop, Bishop Michael Fisher, May the Lord bless them in their zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer the harshness of winter, may the Lord in his infinite mercy ensure that they have adequate shelter and food for their tables. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the grace of discernment help us fulfill God's plan for each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may they soon come face to face with Jesus, their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers as we strive to know your will and follow the plan you have carved out for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that that you should should enter under my roof, roof, but but only only say the the word, word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. People, look east, the time is near.